All right, we're ready to roll. Uh, we've got myself, Austin here, Jeremy again. Unfortunately, AJ's not going to be able to join us today as he's traveling, but we look forward to some good conversations. We're, we're diving into some pretty awesome metrics regarding retention of your customers and uh, making sure they're coming back to repurchase from you. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and start to share my screen here and we'll just jump right in. So here we are on the dashboard and if we scroll down, we're going to have a whole section regarding retention. And uh, I guess a quick note before I dive into these metrics in another video, we've covered subscriptions, which uh, can sometimes be confused or, or, just the, the definitions maybe mixed up a little bit, but the difference between these two here, we're looking specifically at membership type products where people are, you know, on an auto billing type thing, where in the retention section, we're just focused straight on, um, reorders. purchasing anytime, right? Yeah. yeah. It doesn't have to be a subscription. It could be any type of purchase that they're coming back to make. So here we, we, we have three pretty, pretty straightforward cards um, we're going to dive into, and they all attack retention from three slightly different angles. And what we're trying, the picture we're trying to paint here is just, again, you know, how successful are you at, once you acquire a customer, getting them to come back and purchase again from you? If that's your business model, then these cards can, can help you understand that. Uh, let's dive into this first card. So how many customers repurchase here? So um, this visual, just to get the lay of the land first, uh, what we're doing here is we're grouping your customers in cohorts based on when they first purchased from you. And I know we've talked about cohorts in other videos, but just to reiterate, you know, if we focus on March, for example, what this is doing, this is tracking all of your customers where their first purchase was made in March. And so we could, we could see how they specifically perform over time and compare them to different cohorts. So what we're doing in this car, we, you know, we're, we're showing how many customers you brought in during that month, how, what's the cohort size. But then in each of these bars, we're, we're showing what percent of those customers are coming back and purchasing a second third and fourth order. And so theoretically we could take this out to X number of orders, right? We could go to 10, a uh, hundred, depending on what your business typically sees. But with this data here, we're already down to about 1% uh, on average, 2% for who's coming back for a fourth order. So we just stop right here. Um, I know one um, one kind of thing to, to think about as you're going through this is a lot of this is going to depend a lot on what you sell, right? So if you're selling, um, I don't know, dog food, right? Um, and even maybe you don't have a subscription, like for example, my dogs, right? I have two dogs. Um, I don't have a subscription for that dog food, but I buy it the same thing, you know, every month and I just get them different flavors or whatever every month. So things like that, like e-commerce type stuff like that is going to be um, a high, like, you know, I don't know, hobby store. Like if you, you know what I mean? Which I have a feeling nobody watching this is a hobby store, but uh, you never know, you know? Um, so stuff like that. So be aware of that. Um, one of the other things that I, that I noticed, um, like when I go through this with clients is um, always take, if you have a membership, um, look at it with that, but then also remove that, right? Because if you have, like you might be getting 40%, you know, uh, second, third orders, um, but if you remove that, it might go down to 5% because, you know, they're on subscription. So that's really skewing the data. Um, so, so I would look at this, like do that separately. And I would do under the, um, I think it was subscriptions uh, card, you know, so look at that separately and then look at this as kind of non-subscription. So if they're getting product A and then a cross sell to product B, product C, that sort of thing. Um, that's, I think you get a lot more value that way um, because essentially what you're looking at um, and what you're really trying to get when you're looking at this is like how across the board, right, are the clients and not just like one product, but how many, how much are they consuming? So it's, it's actually, if you think about it, it's actually good, um, a good gauge of how your branding is going. You know what I mean? Because um, if your branding is really good, generally people that do really well, good branding 
customers are coming back to you because you're a brand, right? Because you're that company that does whatever you do. Um, and they're buying your other products specifically because of that. You know what I mean? Um, Quest Bar is a good, you know, is, is a good thing. Like I love Quest Bars and I order different flavors and different products and, you know, things like that because I love that brand specifically. Right. So, right. Um, just some, a couple of things to, to look at there. Yeah. Just, to, I guess, to reiterate some of the points you made, you know, consumable businesses are definitely going to have different percentages than uh, other types. And then um, I, I really like what you're saying about filtering out subscriptions mm -hmm. and we could definitely do a, a quick filter on the side over here. We don't have it set up right now with this demo data, but yep. just, just quick toggle, so push of a button. You can see that analysis there. I love yep. it. So yeah. I'm, I'm curious, Jeremy, what, with your mind, what you would do if you came in here and you saw this huge spike, this abnormal repurchase rate spike from, June, where we're seeing a whole lot more customers repurchase. Um, well, I guess first off, I would I would second guess that as well because we notice this trend. Our customers are way down. Yeah. Uh, what, what are your thoughts as you as you look at this? Yeah. So there there are a couple different kind of ways to approach it and a couple different things that you could look at. And obviously, this is you know kind of randomized data, so it's yeah. you know. Um, but but if you were looking at this, right, there are a couple things that you could say. Um, number one, there's not a lot of customer counts, so it may just be invalid data, right? You just may just may need more, uh, more data and there, there's just not enough sample size, right? It's like, it's like doing a split test with, you know, 30 conversions, right? You, it's not valid data. You need more, <laughs> right? So that's one. Um, another thing could be if you ran a promo in this month, um, I, I've seen that where when you run a promo in whatever, February, and you're going back to existing buyers and they're reordering because of that promotion, you'll get a big jump in that month. Um, so, so that's another thing um, to kind of look at. Uh, and then, you know, one of the things which it's not really related to that, but I, I just noticed in this trend was like, if you look at it, the, the reorders are kind of trending down, right? So you may look at that and think like, uh oh, you know, we're not doing a great job on, on retaining our customers and getting them to reorder. Um, especially the, uh, like, actually this is going up a little bit in the middle there. Um, but one of the things that you should look at is as you're putting in strategies to, to help, you know, you're getting more products, you're doing more backend promotions, you're building your brand, all these sorts of things that you can do, um, to get people to reorder more. These should be going up on average, right? They shouldn't be going down or even flatlined. Um, and it's kind of cool that you can look back historically because then you can say like, hey, we implemented this one strategy in June last year. Let's see how that's doing over the last six months. Are we getting more reorders or, you know what I mean? Um, and then you can look and see, was well, it effective or not? Should we do it again? You know, that sort of thing. Um, so yeah, any, um, any, anything that you would look at if you saw that, you know, that big jump there? Yeah, like I said, again, I would, I would start to wonder why we're trending like this. Um, and then, uh, yeah, it's, it's a great time to just look back and see what efforts you did differently in this month versus others. So if it's a promo or, um, again, this is a second repurchase rate. So if it's just a, a random promo that you're throwing out to your entire audience, maybe you would see bumps, uh, ac you would hopefully see that this would be a bump across all the cohorts, maybe a third order rate for some of these more historical ones, but we're not seeing that in particular. So maybe we, we did a thing that we were just testing on this July cohort, right? Where we, we narrowed in on them and tested a promo code. And, and to me, if, if that was the case, I would say this, would, this was successful because yep. it, it's bumping up. All right. Uh, sorry if there's some, any weird things with the editing, we had some tech issues, uh, our recording dropped, but we're back into it now. Um, and what we were, where we were going with our conversation there is that this card as opposed to what we were just looking at previously, where we were just seeing, uh, what percent ordered a second, third, fourth order ever, this card instead is looking at more when those customers are coming back and repurchasing. So if you are on a subscription where you bill every 30 days, or if you're trying to impact 
when people are coming back or when to expect revenue again from customers that you already acquired, this card can help you gauge that. Because what we're doing here is we're showing you now the percentage of customers that are purchasing uh, in certain time frames. So what percent came back and purchased 31 days to 60 days or in their second month uh, after their first order? Uh, so, and then we just extrapolate that out, 61 to 90, 91 to 120, et cetera. And again, we could go, go on yeah. there. So, you know, as, as you're testing promo codes and things where, as I was talking about in the other card, if you were to run a promo code and give it to your entire audience, then hopefully what you would see is that, you know, maybe it was, maybe you ran it in May. And so you would see this 31 to 60 bump up for the April cohort. Whereas for the, for the March cohort, instead it would be the 61 to 90 days, right? Just because it's, it would be staggered like that. And so you can kind of, start to gauge and see the overall impact as, as these bars increase. Yeah. And this is, um, as you're looking at this and trying to kind of figure out, you know, what's going on essentially, um, this again comes down to the fact that every business is going to be different, right? So you have to, you know, you have to use everything in context with this, right? So if you, if you have a supplement business, you know, and you're looking at this and somebody else has an information product business, you're going to be looking at different results simply because they're two different types of businesses with two different types of customers. Right. So, um, and even within that, um, if you have, you know, one of the things that, you know, I, I work with a lot of supplement companies, right. And generally upfront, the initial sales, like one, three or six bottles or like some type of different quantities. Right. So if you break down, if you're looking at this and you're breaking down, don't, I, I wouldn't look at it as an overall basis. I would do it by product. Right. So even, you know, you're selling a, whatever, a weight loss supper, right? So look at it in terms of who bought the one bottle, right? And look at this and see what it looks like. And then unclick that, click just the three bottle, unclick that, look at just the six bottle, because they're going to show different trends, right? The one bottle, you should be getting faster reorder rates because right. one bottle, right? They're going to need it faster versus a six bottle. They're not going to need to reorder in 30 days, right? So and that's, you have to tailor your marketing to that too. Again, if it makes sense, like there's a lot of kind of customization segmentation you could do if yeah. it makes sense, if you're in seven, eight figures and all that sort of thing. Um, but you might see that with the one bottle, it's like reorder rates really high for the first month, second month, maybe third month and they drop off versus six bottle. It's like nothing for four or five, six months and then another one. And then they're probably going to end up, usually those are the types of buyers that buy large quantities. So you're going to see like, boom, boom and almost like a heartbeat, right? <laughs> and then nothing and then boom, and then, you know. Um, so, so that's something to, to consider is like, you know, look at this in terms of what's the product and, and what are you expecting, right? What's the expected uh, buying cycle uh, of that product? You know what I mean? Um, that's, I, I love this one because it shows when people are buying because then you know, like you're looking at that and if you don't have, anything strategically placed to get them to reorder in whatever 30, 60, 90 days or whatever it is. Um, then you know what happens naturally. Right. And then yeah. you can, then you can tailor your marketing to that. It's like, Hey, the one bottle buyers, you know, buy after 60 days and not 30. So, Hey, 60 days, let's do a promo to them to get them to you know buy more. Or if you wanted to do it earlier than that, do it at 45 days or something um, to get that earlier sale or whatever it is, you know, again, it's going to be different. Yeah. And again, with, with cohorts, you, you know, maybe you do have something in place is like a baseline campaign that you're running, but having it in cohorts like this will enable you to, um, you know, more easily a B test some of these strategies, right? Like maybe you just focus on, um, getting this March cohort to, to repurchase after X number of days. Right. And you test a different campaign with April and see what happens. So, yeah. Um, quick question, Jeremy, when, when, you know, over here, uh, we have the first source from our customers. So if you were to come in here and, uh, let's say we just toggle on for Facebook and let's look at some of these numbers. Oh yeah. 50% come back and purchase a second order. Pretty low numbers, but still those are pretty, you know, customers that are coming back. 
verse. Yeah. I don't know what's going to happen if we click on Instagram here. A lot more sporadic. Yeah. So maybe it has to do with what you're saying. Like maybe we're only offering um, certain things on Instagram versus Facebook. But as you're seeing these differences, as you click through where you're acquiring your customers, what sort of evaluations and what's going through your head? Yeah. So I, I generally look at, um, you know, segmenting traffic sources is something that a lot of people do not do. Um, and it's a big mistake because traffic sources have different buying behavior. You know, there's different types of people on Facebook versus, you know, Google and YouTube and, you know, um, Instagram, I think is generally pretty close to, to Facebook. Although, I mean, not really because Instagram is generally a younger audience. Facebook is, is generally an older audience, you know, of course not, you know, kind of across the board, but, um, so, you know, you, you may do something and the way that I generally look at it is cause you can get crazy with it. Right. And if you have a nine figure business, you can get crazy with segmentation and, and do like, I mean, specific campaigns for every single traffic source and like all that kind of thing. Um, for most people, that's not like you're getting way too far in the weeds. So what I do, and I literally just did this yesterday for my own business is, um, I split it, uh, the traffic sources when I'm running traffic, um, into warm and cold. Right. So, you know, warm is like, um, you know, your own house list, obviously anything like, you know, visitors you're getting from your blog or email list, that sort of thing. Um, sometimes even Facebook, uh, which most people don't really think of Facebook as warm, um, depending on the type of marketing you do on Facebook, it very much can be, um, because of the, the types of videos, like if you're doing a lot of, um, you know, bonding, resonating with your audience in your videos and stuff like that, they become warm very, very quickly. Um, you know, versus something like Google and it's like a text ad or a banner ad and they're just clicking on your sales page and buying. Um, you know, it, it, essentially if you have more time to kind of pre-sell them, warm them up to you, right. To, to establish that like and trust and, and then that sort of thing. Um, you're probably going to get different reorder rates because they're already sold on your brand when they buy versus somebody who's just coming if you're doing native if you're doing cold email if you're doing like you know uh, display ads on google that's our youtube um they're coming in cold and they're kind of like they're buying but they're like yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna see if this is legit you know what i mean so um they're gonna have a different buying behavior after they buy versus someone who's already a fan right they're gonna have very much different buying behaviors so that's that's generally what i look at is looking at the difference between more of like a warm and cold um with and again with once you get like into really high numbers then you can dig down further than that um and look at you know uh, kind of buying behaviors and stuff like that um with each individual traffic source within the warm and cold buckets um but in general i think for 90 percent of people watching this um you know kind of just doing a warm and cold is a really good way and, and just look at the buying behaviors, you know, and, and generally you'll see that like, you're going to get higher, uh, AOV or, uh, LTV, you know, the, obviously, and then kind of, corner, kind of corresponds to more, um, retention rates, things like that with a warmer audience, like your own house list and, and that sort of thing, even affiliate sometimes, um, you know, then, then cold. So that, that's kind of how I look at that. Cool. Love it. Great insight. Uh, let's go over to our last card here. I'm just going to click over this way. And what this visual is doing is it's kind of compare or combining the, the other two that we've looked at here. And again, we're grouping by cohort, but um, now what we're showing is the average number of days between a first and second order. So before we were showing what percent of customers are purchasing a second order. And in the last card, we were showing when customer or if what percentage of customers are coming in in a certain time range. And now we're just averaging that out. And so if we were to look at August 2018, for example, uh, on average, it took that cohort 34 days to come back and purchase their second order. And that's of all the clients that did come back and purchase. So based off the numbers we were seeing before, what was it like 4% or something? Yeah. Seven, I don't remember. But um, so we're, we're seeing what percent have come back to repurchase here. So any thoughts on, on this visual? Well, so, so I mean, pretty much, so it's like you said, it kind of summarizes the other two. Um, but what I like about it is that for me, right. For, for my, like everybody's brain works differently. When I look at this, I, I get it like that. Um, for some reason it, it's more congruent with my brain. Like I can, I can see it 
better visually with this than right. the other one. So it's um, there's a lot of value in just looking at the same thing in different ways. You know what I mean? Um, from different kind of angles and viewpoints and things like that. Um, sometimes that's all your brain needs to make that connection is just seeing it in a slightly different way. You know what I mean? So I, um, I kind of like how it's, you know, when it gives you the specific days, it triggers a new, you know, a new neural connection that says, Hey, go try this. You know what I mean? Um, so I, I kind of like that because, and again, like if you broke it down by products, right, it's going to give you even, even more, um, detail. Like if you, if you have a, uh, whatever, um, like certain, certain products again, like I kind of alluded to this earlier, but certain products are going to lend themselves to like, Hey, should you try to get them to reorder faster than, you know, than sooner? Sometimes you need to not bother them. Like if, if you have somebody uh, or a product and the, and the kind of natural, uh, reorder life cycle, I guess you can call it is like 90 days and you're hitting them up at 30 days. Hey, reorder, 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 reorder. That's a really good way to lose a, an otherwise valuable and happy customer, right? Cause yeah. you're just pissing them off. They're going to hit unsubscribe. They're going to, you know, this company sucks. They're annoying. Um, so, so this gives you a good insight into like, Hey, what's, what's kind of the natural cycle of what people are doing. And then you tailor your market, uh, your marketing to that instead of just guessing, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Instead of Generally. guessing and instead of treating all your customers the same, it's a yep. really important insight. Yep. Yeah. Awesome. Um, yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. I, I like the days between instead of like, you know, 30 to 60 or uh, 60 to 90 or, you know, within six months or, or whatever it is. Um, I just, I like specifics, you know what I mean? Yeah. It just makes more sense to me, like saying 33 days or whatever, you exactly. know? Well, and, and having these specifics can, can tailor your marketing even further, right? Like, well, if we have a full 30 day window, I could hit them up any day in that window and maybe it's past when they're normally be more inclined to repurchase if yep. you waited too long. So I agree. I, I really like this card. Another, um, another real quick thing is you may um, see that uh, there's differences um, for the different reorder, uh, like numbers of reorder. So like the first reorder might be, and this is, if you think of like the evolution of becoming a raving fan, right? It generally isn't that like, I bought your product. I love you. I'm a raving fan. I'm going to tell everybody in the world. It's generally, they need a couple purchases and then they're like, oh my God, this brand is amazing. They've tried a couple products um, and they really fall in love with you. So you, you might see that if you're building a really good brand, you might see that you know, between like the first purchase takes whatever, 60 days uh, or the first reorder um, takes 60 days. The second one takes 30 days. And then like the third and the fourth, it's like every 15 days or something like that. Like it, it gets closer because they're now buying more products. They're, you know, like maybe they're buying like the dog food, right? Maybe I'm buying, uh, I, I just start with, um, you know, buying one thing of dog food a month. And then it's like, wow, I really like this brand. Now let's try a second one. And now it's like, now I'm getting a dog food and treats every month. So now it's like two a month. And then it's like, hey, let's add some toys in there. You know what I mean? Like, so you may get more frequency um, if you're building a really good brand. And that's a good kind of guideline if, if you're doing that or not, or you may go the other way and you may, <laughs> you know, you may be losing people. And that's kind of a good indication that you need to focus more on that, right? On, on kind of the back end long term um, cycle of the customer. Um, so th that's another kind of cool thing that you can look at is, is looking at it long term and, and looking at how, how quickly, like the, the timeline in between purchases, I guess, you know, as yeah. they do more purchases, if that makes sense. Exactly. And, and we're seeing that trend in, in this randomized data, mm -hmm. but still, yeah, the, you, as you weed out people that are maybe less loyal or would never become loyal, mm -hmm. uh, start to see that that timeline increase for these later purchases so yeah 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 that's actually a good i guess that was a good example because that's exactly what this <laughs> is showing <Exactly. laughs> yeah so and and to make that more clear um so if you look just at that top line right so the the first one is 34 days the second reorder is 30 the third oh sorry the third one's into the raw data <laughs> there you go yeah so it's like 34, 30, and then 25. So it's getting shorter in between reorders. And that's exactly what I was saying. Right. So this, this randomized fake company is doing, um, or I guess not fake, but you know what I mean? Randomized company is doing a good job with their branding, basically. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> awesome. Hey, random thought. I was, you mentioned earlier that 
you're, you don't, you're not on a dog food subscription. Whoever you're purchasing from needs to get an actual subscription model on there. Yeah. Right. They're like they're yeah. using- I, 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 um, so I get that brand from Amazon and, uh, and I, they're subscribe and save. I don't know. I never, it's never the exact same amount. You know what I mean? So it's like, Oh, the price changes. Yeah. Like sometimes it's like 24 days. Sometimes it's 32 days. Kind of my oh, dogs are weird. They'll go like two days without eating for absolutely no reason. And then they'll like, they'll eat like three bowls of food in one day. It's like, they're, they're strange. They're animals. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, well, we covered everything in this section. Hopefully it was valuable to everybody. Thanks for joining us on, on this new episode. Jeremy, always appreciate your insights. Any last words or be good for the day? No, I'm good guys. Just, uh, I mean, honestly, the biggest thing is make sure you're actually looking at this stuff. You know, it's, it's so easy that it's like, Oh yeah, it's there. It's there. And, and honestly, I've done that too. Right. It's, it's not, you know, for most people, for me, I love looking at this stuff, but for most people it's like, Oh, I have to look at charts and I, have to, you know what I mean? But it's, right. this makes it very visual. It makes it very, um, actionable. Um, you know, go in there and look at this stuff and you'll, you'll be amazed if you just do even God once a month, is more than what most people are doing. Like just pick a card and dive into it for an hour, you know, set a timer for an hour and say, I'm not getting up from this chair and I'm just going to look at this thing and just like download it into my brain for an hour, you know, and do that every month or every week or whatever your timeline is. Um, you'll be amazed at what you actually like the ideas that you come up with, you know, and the, di the difference is that I've seen, I work with a lot of clients and mostly, you know, high seven figure to eight figure businesses. And, you know, 95, probably all of them, honestly, um, have issues with 4 billion things going on. But are those actually being, are they data driven decisions or are they just, hey, that sounds cool decisions, right? Um, and again, I'm guilty of that too. Freaking probably the worst out of anybody is like, you know, you get the, the you know, you're chasing uh, squirrels, right? Like everything, the shiny object that sounds cool. You know, you're at a mastermind and someone tells you about this thing. And then all of a sudden that's the number one priority in the business, even though it wasn't even a priority 10 seconds ago. And now right. it's the most important thing in your entire business, right? <laughs> we all do it. Um, this gives you like, this helps you actually prioritize, you know? So it's, um, it's really important to, to look in this and say, okay, we're going to, we're going to do X because of X and not, we're going to do X because it sounds cool. You know, right. and because, because Joe Schmo did it and they, you know, they did good with it. Right. You know what I mean? Your data may be showing you that, you know, that most likely it's not going to work for you, but Joe did it. So therefore it's going to work. <laughs> yeah. You know? and, so. and the more frequently you're looking at this, the more, the more it's going to just be internal from you, right? right? Where maybe you don't need to go and consult the data when you hear Joe Schmo talking about how something mm -hmm. worked for him, because you already know. Yeah from your business that yeah, that's not going to work for us already because yeah. of it. Right. And uh, it's not that you'll always have to come in here and, and analyze everything before each decision, but the more you're doing it, the more you're going to truly understand uh, your customer base and be able to make those decisions a lot faster. Yep. Exactly. Awesome. Well, thanks so much, Jeremy. Look, I'm already looking forward to the, the next call, but uh, have a great day, everybody. Uh, go make it happen. Thanks guys. Thanks.